Chrissy Freeland jumps the shark and does the unthinkable for Canada, and boy, are we getting ready to pay for it. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. We talked yesterday on the channel about Christia Freeland and her $6,000 a month expenses uh, for personal trainers, gyms, grooming, day spas. It's just absolutely insane. Um, the hubris of this government knows no bounds. But now a new report coming to me on Christia Freeland. Uh, authorizing $500 billion in federal borrowing. And if you guys thought that interest rates were high as it is, if you guys thought that life was unaffordable or that the carbon tax was making us miserable, miserable well, buckle up because it's about to get real scary in Canada. And we're going to get into all that in just one second. But first, I want to have a shout out to this video sponsor, Funnable Friends. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Funnable Friends. After a long day of looking at the world and what goes on around it, especially with this guy. You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. Uh, you'll understand that I think about families. I definitely need a calming distraction. And that's why I'm here today to talk to you about a new YouTube channel called Funnable Friends. This channel happens to be just what the doctor ordered to help take your stress away. We're talking clumsy puppies, hilarious cat fails, and hours of clean, family-appropriate entertainment. What is more is they are a grassroots channel volunteering and promoting local Alberta charities, including the fostering of a cute puppy through Fostering Hope in Red Deer, Alberta. There's no cost to view the content with a portion of earnings from the channel going to assist in the well-being of future animals in need. So if you feel the need to forget about the latest political drama in your life for a while, subscribe to Funnable Friend. The stories of those lives of animals getting turned around is sure to brighten your day, and out of our lives and the chaos that continues in it, we could sure all afford a few minutes out of our lives to be a little more funnable. Link is down below in the description. Now, I know that that sponsor is a little different for the pacing or, or the uh, typical audience of this channel, but let me tell you something, folks. Stress is a major concern these days, and when we get into what's happening with Christian Freeland, stress is going to be something you're going to want to deal with, and I'll tell you right now, nothing changes my day around more than watching some cute and funny little animals rolling around doing funny things, and you can forget about the world for a little while. Uh, it would greatly help me out for some friends of mine if you'd head over to that channel. Again, the link is right below in the description. Head over there, join the channel, subscribe, and uh, show them some love and tell you the, tell them that uh, the Fringe sent you. Because, boy, things are about to get nuts. What is it Michael Keaton said in Batman? You want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Well, Christian Freeland. Authorizing. 500. $17 billion in federal borrowing. Let's take a look at what it says here outlined in this tweet. Is Freeland acting like a communist dictator when it comes to taxpayers' money? She just increased the government borrow limit, borrowing limit by $73 billion, and she granted herself authority to do so. So again, stepping outside of her normal restraints to say, ah, I, I get special privileges because I'm in the liberal government. I can do whatever I like. It's only taxpayer money. It doesn't matter. Shockingly, this is just money that can be borrowed up to April 1st of this year and no reason is given. Probably for money laundering, as my guess, to uh, places like the Ukraine. Uh, when questioned by opposition, she refuses to say what the extra $73 billion is needed for. The previous amount allowed was $444 billion and it's now $517 billion. Again, no explanation given. She raised the federal debt ceiling 56% from $1.168 trillion to $1.831 trillion with zero accountability. Freeland has not specified any plans to budget the federal or balance the federal budget. Sorry, there's a lot of B's in there. The budget was last balanced in 2007. Uh, the budget officer's own comments, we know exactly what the government plans on spending or doing in terms of its new spending or we don't know exactly, sorry. God, you guys, I'm sorry. I, my dyslexia is just kicking in hardcore here. 
Uh, but but the, the budget officer's own comments, we don't know exactly what the government plans on spending or doing in terms of new spending or potential spending, replied budget officer Giroux. Uh, what happens had an actual uh, Nazi descendant who was a journalist put in charge of destroying Canadians without a single, uh, well, single shower, I guess you could say. Lastly, why does that hallway look so narrow? Freeland authorizes $517 billion in federal borrowing. Now, Rebel News has reported a little bit more on it, and we're going to take a look at that. Uh, Freeland previously testified to the Commons Finance Committee, stating the increase in borrowing authority is in no way a blank check. Every single expenditure by the government needs to be authorized by Parliament. Again, passing the buck. I'm sure they'll blame Stephen Harper for this. They seem to be good at doing that. Um, that's always the way to go uh, when it comes to the Liberal government. But by cabinet order, Deputy Prime Minister and Finan Minister of Finance, Christia Freeland, has allowed herself, again, that's the key part, to escalate federal borrowing in the current fiscal year to a record $517 billion. This amount surpasses the previous estimate for the year, concluding on March 31st by $73 billion. I'm guessing Christia needs to get her hair cut again or maybe needs two personal trainers. I, I don't know. Uh, but according to uh, Blacklock's reporter, uh, through an order dated on February 15th under the Financial Administration Act, Freeland defined $517 billion as a maximum aggregate principal amount of money that may be borrowed before April 1st up to the previous limit of $444 billion. No reason was given for this change. And the reason that they're not giving a reason is because when we talk about things like GC strategies, and boy, do I have a doozy coming for you later today on those guys. Uh, when we talk about a quarter of a billion just in contracts going to a company that was claiming IT expenses for a company that does no IT work, um, it's padding pockets. It's funneling of money. This is, this is money laundering. This is all the liberals are doing. They're literally going to bankrupt the country before they're kicked out of office. This should be very alarming to Canadians. They're going to take as much as they can and screw the common citizen before being kicked out of office. Freeland previously testified at the Commons Finance Committee stating, the increase in the borrowing authority is no way a blank check. Every single expenditure by the government needs to be authorized by Parliament. In 2021, Parliament augmented the future or the federal debt ceiling by 56% from $1.168 trillion to $1.831 again under the Borrowing Authority Act. Conservative MP Ed Fast raised concerns accusing Freeland of seeking a blank check and implying a lack of transparency. Freeland countered this assertion, emphasizing that the increased borrowing authority is a transparent and open authorization of up to a level of which the government may borrow. Referring to statements made during a 2020 Commons debate, Freeland stressed the absence of blank checks and free lunches. Well, wasn't it during these quarter of a billion dollar contracts again with GC strategies that a lot of those uh, free lunches came on the backs of uh, $1,900 a day per diems and uh, whiskey tastings or, or something along those lines, premium whiskey tastings. Opposition leader Pierre Polyev questioned whether there was a specific dollar figure limiting the debt to which Freeland replied, we're mindful that limits exist. I don't think so. I don't think so, because these guys are spending money like it's simply just there. And when they run out of money, they print more. We saw this during the pandemic and lockdowns. And that's put us in the current financial situation that this country is in, with a debt ceiling that has radically vamped up interest rates that have caused the common Canadian to be una un unavailable uh, or un unable to afford their mortgage, their rent, their food, their gas, their common bills. What's going to happen with this extra money that's being put out now? During a testimony before the Senate National Finance Committee on February 13th, Budget Officer Yev Giroux expressed uncertainty about the government's plans and emphasized the need to wait and see. Right? Because why, why don't we just wait and see what the damage is before... Uh, putting out our concerns. When asked about the realism of borrowing limit by Senator Elizabeth Marshall, uh, Giroux stated that it looks sufficient, but acknowledged the government's desire to maintain flexibility in case unforeseen events require additional borrowing on short notice. Now, unforeseen events is exactly what I wanted to get into in this claim. And this is part of the problem when you look at Christian Freeland. Unforeseen events are going to mean things like a housing crisis or a war that comes up. If the Ukraine happens to need more money or if we see things in Gaza, 
uh, I guess, um, amplify or, uh, or, or go up in terms of, um, what the country is going to commit. It's crazy before, before we get off of everything, I want to show this tweet, uh, from Melissa showing Canada's broken. No amount of federal or freelance speeches will convince me otherwise. Look at the house price versus income since 1984 in Canada. Now, keep in mind, in 1984, I remember, well, I remember very little. I mean, I was four years old. But I remember in, in, in 1984, my father, well, in 1983, my father having to sell his first purchased home for $1 because interest rates were so extremely high um, people couldn't afford their houses anymore. People were abandoning their homes in the middle of the night. Uh, my father used to tell me stories about waking up in the morning. The neighbor would come over and say, do you have a bottle of rum? Uh, I got some friends over. I'll get, I'll get it back to you. Uh, and he'd, he'd go into the liquor cabinet and get them a bottle. And the next day come outside, the curtains were gone. The house was empty. There were no cars around and people had moved out overnight. This was people losing their shirts over their investments in their future. Now, luckily, our family bounced back very quickly uh, due to a change in my father's career. Uh, but but a lot of people lost their shirts. Now, we see the green line of income here since 1984 in Canada, right? But, but just after the 2000s, you can see this radical uptick. And again, I, I've spoken about, even in Calgary, how in the early 2000s, the average price of a home went from a quarter of a million dollars to roughly $400,000 overnight due to a material shortage. And at that time, I, I had often worried about um, the affordability of buying a home. And I remember saying to my father, well, there goes my chances of ever buying a house because it's just almost doubled overnight. My father tried to reassure me and say, look, this is just because of a material shortage. As soon as those materials become available again, things will stabilize, prices will come back down. Now, materials came back in, and at that time, what, what developers were doing, at least in Calgary, was saying, well, those houses are worth $400,000, our houses are worth $400,000, and they've kind of just stayed and gone up from there ever since. And the cost of living and the cost of buying a home has done nothing more than significantly ramp up since that time. But if we continue on this 30-second... <laughs> Let's cut out the, the music there just in case. Uh, here it goes to continue to climb versus the income. Look at this. We're at 2019, 2020, 21, 2. Oh, it ends at 2022. Okay, well, let's, let's get it right there. Come on, video. Look at that line. This is what the Trudeau liberals have done to Canada. And the average income. I'll be honest... My wife came to me last night and talked to me about job postings. She's, she's often, I, I don't know much about LinkedIn or how those, those apps work because again, I'm, I'm a stay at home dad. I, I do YouTube. I do my books. Um, so I don't know a lot about how the job market works in terms of how people are headhunted these days, but she was offered a position with a job doing executive administration work for $50,000 a year. Now, a couple of years ago, $50,000 a year might have sounded great. However, nowadays, I said $50,000 won't even land you a one-bedroom apartment and the ability to manage yourself uh, on your own. You, you can't make it work at $50,000. It, it's I never thought we would reach a pinnacle in Canadian history where I'd be saying that is not enough money for the average Canadian to survive in this economic climate. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and now Christian Freeland seeking to stack on top of that and double down by completely demolishing our country, uh, by borrowing this kind of money. This should be nothing more than pure outrage. Uh, when we look again at $6,000 a month in grooming uh, expenses, this is a woman who needs to be called out uh, we need to be screaming from the rooftops, ladies and gentlemen. People say your phone calls don't mean anything. Your letters mean nothing. Um, don't just phone Christian Freeland's office. Phone your MPs. Phone your delegates. Tell them that if they don't put a stop to this, if they don't start getting loud, they're going to lose their job. It's, 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 they don't realize 
you're in charge of their position. You're in charge of their future. Um, so I would be very, very vocal with your local representatives. I would be very vocal about how you feel about the current economic climate that we're in and the spending or lack thereof responsibility from our Canadian government. But let me know what you folks think down below in the comments. Again, if it's your first time here, make sure uh, to click that subscribe button. I hope this video has earned your subscription. Um, also make sure to join us on the channel every Friday night for Friday Night Fringe here at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central here on the channel. <laughs> I've got my toddler screaming at me from the stairs. Uh, I'm always looking forward to chatting with each and every one of you outside of making these videos. And it's a great time to talk about everything that's happened in the week, everything coming out in the week ahead. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to catching you on a future one and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.